2020 has been a crazy year and we're now entering 2021. And I've really been thinking about the inspiring stories that we're gonna to continue to share as we move forward this year. Welcome to a new season of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. Everyone, this is George Kuros, and I want to welcome you to another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast, the first of 2021. And last year, I started this podcast uh, at the beginning of 2020, and I started just to see if I'd be interested in it, see if this would connect and, and share. And I started playing around, and as I did it more and more and more, I was, I was way more interested in it. And I, this year, I, I'm really going to commit to it and spend a lot more time, and I've got a lot of guests lined up a lot of people that I've wanted to connect with. And when I share that with you, I share it not only because I want you to hear the plans I have for this podcast and how I'm gonna share, but I also want you to think about the thing that you wanna try. Because sometimes we think if we don't go all in that we can't do it, or you know, we might as well not even start. And for me, the whole idea of this was just to kind of play around, try some new things and to see where I could go with this. And I've really enjoyed this process. I have really enjoyed connecting with people, people sharing uh, their inspirations back to me from the stories that I'm sharing. So I, I hope that you can continue to join me this year as we do this, this podcast in 2021. And if you could, I'm going to be sharing a lot more information, a lot more ideas, a lot more stories, a lot more guests on YouTube. So if you could actually hit that subscribe button and also tap that bell for notifications as we go. I'd love you to be a part of this community. I'd love for you to connect more. And I actually wanna start by asking you a question. And there's a reason I'm asking you this question. I want you to think about an inspiring story or an inspiring educator in your lifetime, whether it was as a student, a colleague, could be an administrator, and, and share below in the comments. And I'd love to hear those stories. I'd love to feature some of those comments as we continue to, to move forward this year. Because what I'm actually doing is I'm starting a new series. And, and yes, I'm gonna continue doing the podcast. You'll, you'll be able to find it on Spotify, SoundCloud, and iTunes. But I'm also gonna have some YouTube exclusive information or and YouTube exclusive shows. And one of the shows I'm actually starting this year is simply called Three Questions. And what I'm actually doing with these three questions is I'm asking educators, you know, people outside of education, to talk about three things. Who is a teacher that inspired you and why? Who is an administrator that inspired you and why? And if you look back on your teaching career, what is one thing that you would like to share with others? What is one piece of advice that you wish you had when you first started? And I wanted to lead by example. I wanted to be able to share my story to start off the year because I think that I wouldn't be doing any of the work that I'm doing today if it wasn't only for some of the teachers that I had when I was in school, but the many teachers, not only that I got the privilege to work with close in, 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 a, you know, in, in the different schools I've worked in uh, throughout my career, but all the educators I've connected with throughout the entire world. So I wanted to answer these questions first. So the first one is who is a teacher that inspired you and why? So this is a bit of a tough one for me to answer because I could pick so many educators from my career. I could pick uh, Mrs. Stock, she was my kindergarten teacher and just really taught me how to be uh, compassionate and kind to others. And I still connect with her to this day. She's actually one of the first people to congratulate me on the release of my second book. And I'll, I'll always remember that. I could also talk about Cindy Penrose. She was my grade three teacher. Plus she taught me music. And I actually remember the comment that she wrote uh, in my report card when I, I went from uh, elementary to high school in grade eight, we had a K to eight school. And she told me that, you know, at some point you, you need to be on a stage. And she always just pushed me, but she was very supportive and just an incredible teacher. But I, 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 I wanna share a story of a teacher, uh, Calvin Hobbs. He was my grade 12 phys ed teacher. He was also my uh, football coach. And he actually started, he was in his second year of teaching from what I remember at the time. And I was in my last year of high school and I had played four years on the football team. And it was really something that I loved doing, but I had also spent four years, which is pretty rare for a high school student in the town that I lived to play that long. It was only a few people had done that uh, every single year. And when he came there, I was a cocky, arrogant kid. And I remember meeting him for this time, for, for the first time. 
and I, I, I welcomed him. But I also told him, said, you know, I, I've been here for four years playing on this team and, you know, I've been here and you haven't. So I kind of expect to be the captain. And he just kind of looked at me like I was ridiculous. And then what happened next was he never said anything, but he really pushed me in practice. And he, he really, you know, made me earn um, that spot. I, I wasn't even guaranteed to be on the team, to be honest with you. And I wanted to be a, a really good leader and I, I, I did everything I could. And at the end, uh, when he named the captains, there was five captains named that year. And he made sure that I was named last. And he wouldn't have named me just because I had spent four years there, but I had proven it to him. And then he pulled me aside after and he said, you know, I know you wanted to be captain and you did a great job of leading, but just understand that you don't ever get something just because you've been there a long time. You have to earn it. You really have to earn that. And I, I think when I, that happened to me, I was just like, thank God I'm captain. Like that's all I cared about. But when I look back on that conversation, I, I think about, I think about how he really pushed me and challenged me and he, that lesson has kind of stuck with me in my life. You know, the importance of uh, hard work, the importance of, you know, earning the, the, the things that you have um, through your actions and through uh, what you do every single day. And he still connects with me to this day. It's interesting. He, he, every time I share something, he'll like commend me on social media. And I know he's near to the end of his career. But it just also reminds me how our teachers are our cheerleaders forever. For an administrator, this is an easy one for me. Kelly Wilkins was my principal, probably about seven years in my career, and she eventually became uh, my deputy superintendent. And I talk about her all the time. I've referenced her both in Innovator's Mindset and Innovate Inside the Box. And she really inspired me to not only want to become a, a, an administrator, but really kind of focus on what I want to do. And the thing with Kelly that I found so amazing was she always brought out the best in people. She always elevated them. She would, could see things in them that they couldn't see in themselves, but eventually she would help you find that passion. She would find that. And I wouldn't be doing the work that I've been doing for the last you know, 10 years if it wasn't for Kelly Wilkins. I actually had thought that I was gonna quit education, but she kind of pulled me out of this and she saw things that I was doing and she gave me a confidence and I felt that because she made me feel so valued, I, I worked way harder for her and I, I connected with her and it was easy to, to work with her. She's inspired so many. And the thing that I love about Kelly is that this story that I'm sharing with you, that how she kind of lifted me out of some of the work that I was doing, she could find those things and, and she is the epitome of developing more leaders was that this is not just a story that I could share, but I, I watched so many people that were influenced by her, that found so much wisdom in her advice and connected. And I think about her as an administrator, inspiring so many other people in their career who inspired so many kids. And it reminds me how powerful it is to be an educator, to be an administrator, because your influence, you can't measure. It's impossible because it goes on and on for generations. And Kelly is someone that I hold really dear to my heart to this day. And I'm so grateful because I don't know uh, if, I, if I didn't cross paths with her, would I be doing what I was doing today? And so the last question is like, what, would I, what advice would I give myself as I, you know, be, as I started my first year of teaching? And I remember my first couple of years when I was in, when I was teaching in the classroom, not only how exhausted I was, but also how I took things personally, that if there's a discipline issue in the classroom, it's because the kid hated me uh, and I would never get through to a kid or I would never, you know, have that impact. And to, to be honest, yeah, I cried a lot. Like I would love to say that I never took it personally, but I did. I did. I felt this was, uh, all because of me or something I was doing wrong and something, uh, you know, that I <laughs> maybe had offended a kid or had done something and the kid was never going to like me, things like that. And I remember there was this really weird turning point for me and it happened in an instant. And I, I like to look back at some of those situations and, and I'd love you to think about that too, is that are there certain moments where things change for you? Not a gradual, but an, an instant change. 
and we had a, a back to school speaker and he said something that had always resonated with me and the way he said it was funny, but it also made a lot of sense. He said, never let an eight year old ruin your day. And I laughed at first, but then I thought, you know, I have a kid who maybe say something rude to me who's eight years old and that would ruin my day or lose sleep over it. And nine times out of 10, if we're being honest, when a kid does something that you find disrespectful or rude, it's not you. And it's, it's not necessarily even the kid. It's what they're going through that you didn't understand, that you didn't see. Some of the stories that are happening maybe at, at, at home or um, some of the things that they're dealing with with friends. But it's easy to take that out. And if you really think about that, just take a moment and think, who are you hardest on in your life? Are you hardest on the strangers that you interact with um, randomly? Or are you hardest on the people that are closest to you? That you know have your back and i think about that a lot of times that sometimes when you really know someone has your back or someone really cares about you 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 tend to be the hardest on those people because you feel they got you and so that moment i it wasn't that i was perfect as a teacher and i never did anything wrong but i i realized that a lot of times when kids were getting really frustrated it wasn't me. And I wish I had known that earlier. And it really calmed me down in the work that I was doing. It really kind of, you know, lowered the temperature for when a kid would get angry. And I felt that not only did it cause me less stress, it also helped me to better deal with the situation. It's kind of like yelling at someone to be quiet. You don't, you escalate if anything. But I felt a lot more calm because I knew this was not about me and it's easier to recognize those moments. And I, I think sometimes that, hey, it's good to have that stress and to, to kind of go through and see how hard it is. And that was part of the process of growing as a teacher. But I, I wish that speaker would have said that earlier in my career, because there was a lot of sleepless nights when I first started. So as you kind of go through this profession, as you go through education, uh, just remember most of the time, it's not you, it's something else that's going on. And I, I'm glad that I, I, I not only heard that, but I kind of, I've really gravitated to that idea. So those are my answers to those three questions. I would love to hear any of your answers, any questions. So if you're listening on the podcast, uh, pop on over to YouTube, it's youtube.com slash George Kroos, I am, and share your response in the comments. Like who is a teacher inspired you? Who's an administrator that inspired you? What's a piece of advice that you can go back to your, your beginnings of, of teaching and share with others? I'd love to hear from you in the comments. Uh, I hope you have a wonderful day. Thanks for taking the time to listen. Thanks for all you do. Take care.